things are not going to plan with China's economy. Joe Biden says China's a ticking time bomb. China's in trouble. The Economist magazine talks of President Xi's failing model. Whatever has gone wrong, it asks. Not much from President Xi's perspective. He's described the strong resilience, tremendous potential and great vitality of China's economy. Potential? No doubt. Vitality? It's not the word everyone would choose. In 2007, official figures showed China's annual growth peaked at over 14 percent. This year, it's projected to be around four and a half percent. And an important part of the equation is property. The property market accounts for around 25 percent of China's economy. For context, in the US, it's 16 percent of the economy, which means property really matters in China. People aren't buying as many homes, so the whole model is, is slightly falling apart. And this is a big problem in China, particularly China, because the real estate sector occupies a bigger part of the economy than it does uh, in many other countries. And that connects to how rapidly China has urbanised. In 1980, 20% of the population lived in urban areas. By 2021, it was 60%. That's involved millions of homes being built. But after all that construction, now there's a problem. Property is, is arguably a ticking time bomb. Uh, I, I'm not a, a fear monger, but I see things getting notably worse over the next five years and notably better. Right now, these problems center around two enormous property developers, Evergrande and Country Garden. Because in order to build more and more homes, they borrowed more and more money which is why their debt is estimated to be $300 billion and $196 billion, respectively. Now, it can be argued the Chinese government encouraged this borrowing to help grow the economy, but China's central bank has called it reckless expansion. What isn't disputed is that these companies are now struggling to service their debt huge problems at Country Garden. That's China's biggest private property developer. They've announced a $6.7 billion loss in the first half of the year. And now they're kind of lurching from deadline to deadline as they try to pay their debts. That's causing concern that Country Garden may fail to meet its debt repayments. And two years ago, that's exactly what Evergrande did. And it had a huge impact. As the Wall Street Journal noted last year, Evergrande's distress has spread across China's housing market and many related industries. And let's remember, these aren't simply property firms. They have many other interests too. For example, Evergrande owns an electric car firm. It owns one of China's biggest football clubs, Guangzhou FT, and much more besides. And the struggles of Evergrande point to something wider. It's just one of many companies in China, developers, that are struggling. You're talking about the most overvalued housing market in the world. I mean, Evergrande is just the tip of the iceberg. The problem is massive. And to understand this problem, we need to look at the shift towards private property ownership. Because if we go back to the mid 20th century, under Mao Zedong, China adhered to a strict interpretation of communism. That meant state control of property and resources. But as the century neared its end, elements of a more capitalist system were introduced. For example, in the housing sector, reforms in 1998 meant that anyone who wanted a new home had to purchase it privately. And that drove a rapid shift towards home ownership with a low cost of borrowing adding extra impetus. Demand surged, construction surged, as did China's economic growth. But the pace hasn't maintained. China was catching up to the industrialized world for the last several decades. They've, they've caught up in a lot of ways. So that growth engine is now dissipated as it must for every economy that matures. In other words, a slowdown in some form was inevitable. And while growth slowed, problems in China's housing market had been in plain sight. Vast urban areas have been unoccupied, some becoming known as ghost cities. And buildings like these are empty for a number of reasons. One is that land was sold to developers by local governments in areas where housing wasn't really needed. Another reason is that for some, these properties weren't bought as homes, they were bought as an investment. Here's my colleague Lucy Williamson in 2013. But look inside some of those gleaming high rises and you'll get a surprise. There's no one there. Families are buying up second, third, even fourth homes purely as an investment because property 
is one of the few places Chinese can put their money and get an amazing return. For all these reasons, there was a gap between the number of homes being built and the number of new homes being lived in. And the government tried to close this gap. It offered incentives and some ghost cities did fill up. But the developers kept borrowing and kept building. That is, until 2020. That's when Beijing introduced laws designed to contain the developers' borrowing. And that had an impact. Those laws led directly to Evergrande defaulting on its debt repayments in 2021. Smaller property firms were affected too. And as developers found it harder to access funds, the rate of construction slowed down. Some projects didn't start, some didn't get finished. And that same year, Business Insider reported that China has at least 65 million empty homes, enough to house the population of France. More recently, this is the city of Qingdao in the east of China. The BBC's Stephen McDonnell was there in June. This problem with real estate supply and demand isn't limited to this area. It isn't even limited to this city. You can drive out of here for hours and you'll find clusters of towers with unoccupied or unfinished apartments, many where work has stopped altogether. And this has had a particular impact because of the way that property is sold. In China, quite often what happens is people pay for houses up front before they're even built. Uh, companies get this, have been getting this cash in and then using that to pay to pay builders to build houses that other people have bought. So it, it's a long chain of debt that they've built up. And so, because many construction projects were grinding to a halt, people had paid for homes that weren't getting finished and some made their frustration clear. Bear in mind, public protests in China are rare, but this was in 2021, as people demanded their money back from Evergrande. But even for those whose property is complete, new homes are no longer the investment they once were. Prices have fallen, though by how much is hard to say. Bloomberg suggests China's housing slump is much worse than official data shows, and falling house prices have a number of knock-on effects. It doesn't make anybody um, feel uh, very wealthy and willing to spend if you're seeing the value of your home decline and house prices falling around you. Consumer spending's being affected, and there are other ways the housing downturn is making itself felt. For example, in China, a crucial source of revenue for local governments is selling land to developers. But sales have plummeted. As the Wall Street Journal reports, Chinese local government's total land-related income in 2022 was down 23% from a year earlier. All of this creates pressure on the economy, and the US is watching how China responds. They have had some real difficulty in terms of their economy of late, particularly in real estate. And I think the actions that they're going to have to take are ones that are they're in the process of deciding right now. President Biden talks of the actions that China is going to have to take. Or put it another way, The Economist says there's a choice with the housing market. On the one hand, letting Country Garden fail could lead to wider panic, more economic pain and potentially more defaults, risking contagion and social unrest. On the other, stepping in with a rescue package would put officials on the hook for many more bailouts and prop up an unsustainable industry. And despite some new support measures, that second option doesn't appear imminent. Beijing doesn't seem to be stepping in yet with the kind of stimulus spending that we've seen in years past. Think back to 2008 when they announced a record stimulus package, $586 billion to prop up the economy. They're moving very cautiously. And right now, this is the government's message. All sorts of comments predicting the collapse of China's economy keep resurfacing. But China's economy has outlived them all. What has collapsed is such rhetoric, not China's economy. China's economy will remain a major engine for the global economy. It's true. China's economy is a major engine for the global economy. Its economic growth is much higher than many Western countries. But China's actions suggest it's concluded that its property sector can't continue as it is and that property can't be expected to drive economic growth as it once did.